Hello. Good afternoon. Welcome to the Older Adult Advisory Committee. I'm Chairman of the Board, Don Brown, substituting today for our Chairman uh, Barbara uh, Commissioner uh, Zinner, who's unavailable today, but um, so you get me, for better or for worse. So, first item is a Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Uh, need uh, attendance, please. Roll call. Betty Bishop. Yes. Rochelle Fiquet. Yes. Jennifer Hamill. Here. Nils Omholt. Here. Suzanne Aspesh. Vito Pianello. Phil Randazzo. Present. Marsha Rallier. Here. Jill Silbernagel. Here. Moira Smith. Here. Carol Thompson. Here. Barbara Vansicle. Here. Carol Weidenbach. Here. Kathy Western. Here. Roy Wilson. Here. Carol Weissman. Here. That completes the roll. Thank you. Um, next item is adoption of the agenda. Can I have a motion to adopt the agenda? So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Motion's ad agenda is adopted. I need a motion to approve the minutes. Dated on November 29, 2022. Move. Second. Any discussion on the minutes? Seeing none, uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Very good. The minutes are approved. Item six is public participation. This is the first opportunity for anyone from the public who wishes to be heard on any subject on the agenda. There will be another opportunity at the end of the agenda to speak in any subject you wish. Is there anyone here from the public that wishes to be heard? Anyone from the public wishes to be heard on any item on the agenda? One last time, anyone on the agenda? Anyone wish to be heard? <laughs> Seeing no one will close public participation. Item seven is pres presentations. Come organization retiree enrichment uh, or more commonly referred to. We have Dave, Dave uh, Taran here today, the director of um, the organization. Uh, before we get started, can I have a motion to receive and file his report? So moved. Moved. Second. Second. Okay, very good. Um, well, thank you, Chairman Brown and everyone here. Uh, it's so great to see everyone. Uh, many good friends here on this committee, including some of our ambassadors. So we're really pleased always to be here. Um, we have a new slogan for our catalog this year, More is Better, <laughs> uh, which is a nice double entendre. Uh, we really want to thank everybody here for their help. It's been very uplifting. You've made suggestions we took to heart specifically how to keep our costs low on the initial package of six. It's really worked for us. And I think this slide really symbolizes uh, what more is about. That's Terry Torella, one of our, our ambassadors at uh, our event at the uh, Stahl's Auto Museum last summer. And you can see she's very happy. And we want to project happiness and fulfillment to seniors. Our new catalog is on the street uh, for the spring program. It starts on the 27th of March and runs until uh, mid-May. And you all have a copy of the catalog in front of you. If you want more, we'll get them to you. This is a sample of the internal listing of the catalogs. Uh, this is not all of the, of the courses, of course. It's just uh, an indication. Uh, what you see here is the catalog uh, listings by topic. Uh, that never used to be done, and we learned from listening to folks like you that in addition to the, the list by date, we have the list by topic. Um, some of the highlights of the spring program, uh, the return of the popular politically speaking course. When I got this job and started asking questions or listening to people, I found that the most popular course that was repeatedly requested was the return of politically speaking, and we're going to have more to say about that later. Uh, we have six out outside events coming up this late in the spring. The reason is we've learned that when the weather gets nice, people don't want to be inside. It's not rocket science, but uh, we sprinkled in some outside events towards the end of the term. Uh, so not, people aren't always in class then. And uh, another thing we try to do is rotate presenters, create new presenters opportunities, 
So 30% of our presenters this spring are new. And the ones that really work out, we'll keep bringing back in some kind of rotation. Uh, also, we're trying something new. Uh, we've been told in, informally that people need orientation to, in terms of how you register and all that other stuff uh, in terms of joining the program. So we, uh, we opened up this year a, a first, which is free uh, classes on orient, orientation to more. Uh, they're to be held next week, but we only have one person <laughs> who's asked for it. So <laughs> I don't know if that experiment's going to work too well, but uh, maybe we can promote it better. And then, of course, uh, a lot of things that we do are the direct result of focus groups. Uh, this is a form of focus group because we listen to what you have to say, as I said earlier. Um, but we also have formal focus groups uh, with, at uh, times, specific groups. For example, We've had people who've never attended more come to a focus group. And we had a, 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 a men's only <coughs> focus group. And, and that's interesting because we had about uh, 75 or 6 percent female participation in, in more uh, when we started picking this back up after COVID. But of course, the demographics are 46 percent of, uh, of the over 85, over 55 population in uh, Macomb County is, is male. So we had a men's only focus group and found out what they wanted to hear. We made some adjustments and now the, the, the um, registrations so far this spring are 32% male. So we've picked up about uh, five, point, or five to six points of, of registration of men. That we're not losing the women, we're gaining men to get that number. Um, also, uh, we found a, a, lot of, a lot about the, what people wanted in the summer. We've traditionally not had much of a summer program. Last year, we created a new one that involved events as well as classes, and it was a very major success. I have some statistics on that later. So what are we going to do this summer? Once again, five uh, classes, five events, uh, through beginning uh, Friday, the July 21st, and ending on the 7th of August. And uh, we're going to have that catalog fire out fairly early this year, by the end of May, we expect to. And here's what we're going to be doing. Um, we're, we're going to the winery for the first class. Then there is a class on Edsel and Eleanor Ford, Ford's lives. And then we go to the Ford house as an event the next day. Then we take a day off. That is, uh, we're still working, but we need that buffer time to manage the events better. Then we have a class on Al Kaline's Last Bat Boy, hmm. Introduction to Pickleball, which we got a lot of help from Kathy Western on that. Um, and then news for electric vehicles, which are very much in the, in the play these days, as you know. Uh, then a, a course on volcanoes, one of our most popular presenters, uh, Chuck Miller, uh, is uh, a new geologist. He's teaching that. Uh, then we go to the fire academy for the college and then hike the nearby nature trail, the, James B. Nicholson Nature Trail, and then have a class on craft beer making. Then we're going to go to Belle Isle for the final one, and that's our picnic. We learned last year that everybody loves a picnic, so that's how we end up this summer. These are statistics. I've shown you a version of this slide before, not to dwell on a lot of detail here, but when uh, the, the program was, was completely stopped by COVID, as everyone knows here, we had to rebuild it from scratch, and uh, we have goals to do that that have been supported by our college leadership. Our goal last uh, spring was uh, to bring the attending unit count up to 1,780, I, I should say last fall, and 265 attendees, and we essentially made those goals. Uh, so we feel pretty good about being on track with covering the program. Our objective for the spring, this spring, is 2,400 attendee, uh, attendee units and 300 attendees. Now, an attendee unit is one person, one class, and that's an important metric as well as attendees. Uh, the, the thing that's important about this is that the tw attendee unit figure is what was traditionally done by Moore in spring and fall. But we've also exceeded the number of attendees that are, were traditionally done. And here you see that the evidence, uh, if you look at that lower right-hand a red circle. The gross number of attendees last year was greater than the gross number of attendees the last pre-COVID year. 
people are coming back to more. That's what's important to the college. We also want more attendee units. We'll talk about that more. But the point here is that it's, the program is successful and growing. Now here's where we stand registering for our classes that start uh, at uh, the end of March. We've already got 114 attendees signed up through noon today, 858 attending units. That's about 38 and 36% of our objective. And we have another month to go to register people. And we also register people during the course of the term because if our policy is if you get a hold of us within two days of a class being held, you can register for it. So we register all the way through. So I think our numbers are pretty intact, but if you just do the math, right now we're five attendees short and 179 attendee units short. So we need your help to help us get the word out. And if you haven't signed up yourself, you ought to be coming. All right? So, and we'll make some special deals for you as well to get you there. <laughs> uh, now, here's another indicator. It's not all bad news. This is actually a very good news chart. Last year, because our catalog was late, we had all kinds of other startup issues. Uh, we didn't really register anybody until March. And this year, because we're making progress on our internal issues, we started registering people in February. And you can see we've already registered more people in February than we registered in March last year. So there's a big head start. So we expect big things to happen for us. So here's some other developments uh, in terms of how we administer the program. Uh, we've relocated the classes from the University Center to the uh, Lorenzo Cultural Center. And that was done for a variety of reasons, one of which was we could only be in the uni University Center one, one term out of three. And that meant that people were churning all the time, all of our attendees, where do I go? And we had people go to the wrong building and that sort of thing. Uh, so we had to move to a place where we could be stable. We found a way to do that at the Lorenzo Cultural Center without, a, getting, uh, without abandoning any of the good things about the UC. So for example, the walk in the parking lot is the same. So we have a good uh, system there now and it also have a brand new AVIT uh, system, which is very, very good for us. And we've, people who have been coming to Moore know we had some trouble with the uh, AVIT system uh, at the UC this past year. And that's going to be corrected. It's a $2.3 million investment in IT and audiovisual capability. Another very important thing, and we have ambassadors here with us today, is our ambassador program. We have 16 very loyal, uh, more attendees who volunteer to help us. And they've done a great amount of work for us, delivering catalogs, selling the program, doing phone surveys, coming to the classes and helping us manage the classes. Uh, Art Rathke, who's one of our uh, star uh, ambassadors, is, has an IT background, volunteered to monitor all the Zoom classes for us. So we don't have to do that ourselves. This is a great thing for him to do. We didn't ask him. So these are wonderful people. Uh, and we're really grateful. And we, we appreciate what they do so much. One of the things we've done is we've improved uh, the quality of our mailing list. When I got there, there were three mailing lists that were not connected and they were not audited. I don't know how that happened, but it did. So with, my, with the help of Sharon, who's a wonderful person, you can see her photo there, that she's my, uh, she calls herself my assistant. She's just really my partner, a uh, very talented and detail-oriented person, very, very capable uh, to straighten all that out. And we have the Zoom hybrid classes I touched on. We, we have an owl. So we have a camera system that follows the speaker. Uh, and uh, also we have uh, a lot of other things going on. I don't need to read this to you. There's a lot of things going on behind the scenes that allows us to improve the program and communicate better with the audience. Well, one thing that's really important is politically speaking. And I mentioned earlier that uh, we had reinstated that. It was not easy to reinstate because the original moderator for this program uh, had retired and <coughs> flatly refused to come back and do it again. So we had to find a moderator. And that took us about half a year. We landed a really great one. Ed Hartfield has spent his entire career with the Federal Mediation Service. He's perfect for the role. 
And also, he has a personal creed. He's semi-retired. He spends his time now on the goal of getting people to communicate civilly, even if they don't agree. So he's the perfect guy for this. So we've restarted it. Um, we've also uh, d listened to our audience, as I said here, uh, for what they want, and we've changed our programming to meet them. Now, on to politically speaking, these we're, there's two different class events that will be moderated with having speakers of differing views. And the first one is Carl Marlinka. I'm sure you understand who Carl is, a very distinguished gentleman here in Macomb County. And his opposite is going to be Chief James Craig, who was a successful, of course, uh, police chief in Detroit and then went on to run for governor. They, that is going to be very interesting because they're both law enforcement experienced people with different views, and there's a lot of issues in law enforcement, like what happened at Michigan State. So th there's, it's a structured program, it's not random, and we're developing the final uh, questionnaire for that right now. Then and in the second program in May, is, excuse me, is going to feature <clears throat> an important new senator, state senator here from Macomb County, um, Kevin Hurtel, and uh, obviously come from a, he comes from a very uh, imp important political family in Michigan. And his opposite is a Macomb County businessman, uh, Max Weiner, who's uh, important to the Republican Party in Michigan and also is on the city council where he lives in Gross Point Park. So the, we have some really good people lined up. I'm really proud of the help we got to get this done. And so it's a, it's a good thing, I think, for the program, for the college. By the way, the college leadership supports this program. We're not afraid to have differing political views aired on the campus. Uh, so what we're asking from you is continued support, of course, and to help us meet our objectives, as I mentioned earlier, and to just uh, continue to keep in mind how valuable this program is for, season, for se senior citizens in this county and elsewhere. Because we've learned the hard way, and I'm a senior citizen, I don't, I don't think of myself as being one, but I am. And it's very important to be active. It's very important to have your mind engaged. And not everybody can be as ambulatory as they might once want to be. So you can't cater every, everything to people hiking around. But, but you, it's important to have an awareness that there's a very broad array of capabilities and interests among seniors. And it, it goes from people who can barely get through the door to people who are more robust than 50-year-olds than, than and people who are mentally active and those who need a little help. Uh, we have to think about the needs of all these people. And I think that's a theme for this committee. We have to think about the needs of all the people over 55. It's a very important group. It's a third of the county demographic, one third. And you know that. Uh, but I, I just want to emphasize how important I believe more is to the health and welfare of the senior community here. Now it's open to questions. Thank you. Um, I've got a couple questions. Uh, again, explain the difference between attendee units and attendees. What? Good question. An attendee is one human being signing up for the program. An attendee unit is one person, one class count. So for example, we have a six class package, a 10 class package, and a 14 class package. Uh, if you take 14 classes, that's, that's, that's 14 attendee units. One person going to 14 classes. I got you. And the reason that's important is because that's revenue for us, but more importantly, it, it's, it's a measure of how engaged the senior community is with learning and being involved. And it's also important for the presenters because we don't pay presenters. They're all volunteers. What, 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 what motivates presenters? Audience. So we, we want to make both of those objectives happen. Now, Dr. Chandler, who's, who we report to at the college, is first and foremost interested in people. So he's looking at the attendee count. By, uh, his immediately, immediate direct report, Woody, uh, uh, <laughs> William Wood, we call him Woody, uh, is interested more in attending units. So we have two bosses, each wanting to, to those twin objectives to be met. And of course, I agree with them. So that's what we try to do. Can you register people 
like bring a laptop to a senior center and register them after a presentation? Yes. I mean, it seems to me if you went to the senior centers in this county, first of all, people would be very interested to know what you're doing and they'd be interested in this magazine and someone would probably register right on site because they'd like the assistance to do that. Some of them are not computer savvy to, to do it on their own or whatever they, whatever they have available to them. But yes, we, one we, way to do that, and you may have done that before, but it seems to me that we've got all these representatives that have all ties to their local senior centers that would get you right in, um, it, you know, through the schedule, of course, you know. So. Absolutely. We, we've met, been to many of them. Uh, we do a lot of scheduling over the phone. Can you uh, schedule on, have you done scheduling on site? Yes, we can do that as long as we have an internet connection. Okay. And we can do all those things. So this is where the ambassadors come back in. With just myself and Sharon, yeah, it's hard to cover all the bases. So uh, that's one of the reasons why the ambassadors are so important because if they, if they go to a senior center with catalogs, if, if they would, may not be able to register them on their laptop right there, but, but they have the phone number, and Sharon will do it for them over the phone. And if we are in person with people with our laptops, we can re register them right there. That could be done. Is there a registration form in here that they could pull out or, or, or tear out if they wanted to? That they there's, could there's a in? list of instructions. We register online, okay. uh, and it's working. We mo we have fewer and fewer people asking for help registering online. They're getting used to that. Good. But but also we register over the phone, okay. and it's all in there. It's all in the catalog. That's great because I mean, it's great information and great programming. Obviously, I see some of the input from some of the mails that you had. In your focus group with the beer, how to brew beer. Right. I'm sure that was probably a, a recent agenda. So, um, questions from the committee? Do have any questions? I don't have a question, but I would like to Please. make a comment. Sure. I've been coming to these classes for, gosh, I don't remember how many years. And I yesterday I signed up for 14 classes, which is what I usually do the max. And I've even asked if I could go to a couple more, I think last time, because they were so interesting. There are repeats within there, and I crossed off ones that I've already seen, but it just, they're just fascinating. Yeah, it's really an interesting program. That summer program really sounds fun. It really mm -hmm. sounds, I mean, that's what an opportunity. Um, seems to me you could have full your objectives here with only five short with this members of these committees. <laughs> that's right, absolutely. That's exactly <laughs> why I'm here. Do some more sweet talking. <laughs> Any and if other I questions? Could, I could add a comment Kathy. to chime in with... Uh, Carol, that I've been a long-term attendee of um, Moore and what it was previously known as SOAR. And I'd like to first thank you for taking the input and really implementing it. Um, the feedback that you received from this group and seniors across the county, and it shows in what you've done. And also to congratulate you on resurrecting and expanding this program that we really thought we could doggone might lose during COVID. And it's it's really invigorated again, and you're to be commended for that. Thank you, Kathy. Couldn't do it without you and a lot of other good people. <laughs> Anyone else? Well, it starts with good leadership, and obviously you and your team are doing a good job, and uh, I echo the sentiments of uh, Mrs. Western about, I mean, it's, it's a very good program, and we have more seniors every day in this county, and this is a what an opportunity. I mean, so and, and an expensive opportunity at that. So absolutely, uh, it's very good. All right. Well, any motion has been made and supported previously. All those in favor of receiving and filing his report, say aye. 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 Opposed. Thank you very Thank much. You. We look forward Appreciate to hearing it. from you in the future. Thank you. Take care. Appreciate it. I the main is. Uh, some committee items discussion of future topics and locations for meetings. Um, now, understand you had some previous discussion on, on the issue. Um, there's discussion about moving some meetings around, maybe having it through senior centers, maybe during a time when there are a bunch of seniors at your local center, maybe before lunch or after lunch, or maybe even during, maybe during the lunch. Uh, many ideas and. I'm going to let Andrea talk about um, some of the ideas and topics that she was the conduit from the previous meetings. Um, yes, so last year the, at your first meeting, we came up together with a list of ideas of, I think, about 15 different topics between staff and yourselves. 
Um, and we were able to accommodate all but like one or two of the idea those ideas, which was great. Um, so I'd like to get a list together again um, between staff and all of you again. And then once I compile that, um, if you have any ideas now, I can take those or you can email them or call me with those. Um, and once I get that, I'll put it all together and then you can see that next month. Um, and then I can work on our agendas from there. Um, the other thing Chair Brown had mentioned, we had thought about, um, you, you noticed 8B, um, we had your meeting schedule and we only did it through April. I know that's hard with some of your schedules to try and you know only have a few months and not notice for the whole year. Uh, next month we'll get you the rest of the year, but what we were hoping to do was get some ideas from you for maybe having these meetings um, at outside locations, at senior centers within your districts. So if you have any ideas for where you think might be a good location, let me know um, and I can get that list together as well and then work on scheduling those. Um, we were worried if we kept the fourth Tuesday at three o'clock of every month, it might be hard to set that up that way. Um, so we thought we'd just book here for the next few months and then we'll work on that schedule afterwards. Um, and I also included in your packets uh, page six, um, we have a list of the presentation history from your very first meeting back in 2018 <laughs> with the first um, older adult term that we had. Um, so if you want to look through those presentations, if there's anything you'd like an update on, uh, we can certainly look at scheduling something like that. Um, or you know, any new ideas are of course welcome as well. Um, so yeah, if anybody has any ideas now, I can I can take those, Marsha. Yeah, just a thought. Um, since we're scheduled through April, then comes May. Yeah. And I'm wondering if there's going to be an older Michi Michiganians day oh, yes, in right. May, and then maybe we could use that month to go to Lansing. Yes, that'd be great. Yeah, and I think that'll probably look a little different this year, so maybe we could work that out. That would be great. That's a great idea. Yeah, pre-COVID we went, and uh, yeah. so fascinating. Yeah, no, that was a that was and a great And our representatives event. <laughs> are there, and they met with us, and um, yeah. Yeah, okay, good idea. Perhaps we can arrange transportation for everyone in a bus so you don't yeah. have to drive up there separately. It'd be a collective. Uh, we, one did that be group. we did that before, so I don't know. You did? Yeah. We had a Carol drove us. <laughs> I don't know if we asked the bus, but I was, <laughs> was a, a, able we to secure. We were special. <laughs> R rumor is it that we had way too much fun doing that. I'm not sure that we'd well, maybe supported. having an official bus would be a limitation on your fun so maybe <laughs> keep it more private sector totally so you can have more fun oh i, I doubt it well, we have fun no matter how we travel because <laughs> as long as we're together that's great yeah. i do say i ran into salvatore d'angelo not too long ago he said he would be interested in presenting again from martha t berry oh good okay if I could suggest as well, um, if we could have our own Macomb County senior citizens um, back at a meeting, because there are, there have been so many changes, and now they're not part of the Action Center, and they're always expanding their programs. I think it would be great to have a refresher. Mm -hmm. Any other ideas for topics? I guess a comment. I like the idea of moving around to different senior centers so that we all get an idea of what some of the senior centers are that we're not familiar with. That would be great. And that's where really the power of this organization is because we do a lot, you get a lot of good information here, but taking it out into the centers and getting it in front of people that can't get down to Mount Clemens or, or, or aren't watching it on YouTube. We've got better technology now that they can share this in their centers if they want, but but take it right into your communities is really where the money is, in my opinion. And we can really deliver the message right to the people that don't have opportunity or, or, or just come out for the meal and they go back to their homes, right? So it would be a good opportunity to give them information. Hearing about this program, the SOAR program, mm -hmm. the SOAR program, excuse me. But, you know, it's a great, great opportunity. And, and all of your senior centers are set up for meetings and hosting meetings. And they've got seniors that come there regularly. And maybe if you ask them, Say, wouldn't it be a good time for us to come? We meet on this this Tuesday, and you know maybe they'll let you come in there in the morning. We're not wedded to three o'clock because it's going out. So reach out to your local senior center, and if you and you don't have to wait to the next meeting to tell us either. You can email staff and say, listen, yeah, we got an opportunity here to, you know, here at this center, and maybe want to come in before lunch. It'd be a good time because the people will be coming in for lunch, and if they can promote it ahead of time. They'll let people know on their community calendar that there's going to be a meeting here. 
and some people know about it in advance and they'll maybe come in early. The best opportunity that I find is doing it during lunch because they're all, they're not going to run away. They're eating lunch. <laughs> uh -huh. And, but it'd be an opportunity to present where they're all there. So, um, and they're very, the senior center leaders are very accommodating and, uh, they'd be probably think it's pretty cool because they're always looking for additional programming. Like we're looking for programming. They're doing the same thing. So this could be something that they could really promote. Say, hey, come on, guess what? Guess who's coming to town? <laughs> and we could have it all set up with staffing and, and be do a nice program. And we'd have someone, the best person to have would be someone from our senior, Macomb seniors, but we'll design a special program for each one of them. And maybe it can be the same program in parts of it because we're going to different audiences with the same message from our senior center perhaps and some other group that you guys think are the best to have as a topic. And, you know, in the limited time you have, you have probably an hour. Um, but that's where the that's where this really has the opportunity to go to the next level. We've done so many good things, and you've been so much spreading the word. But think how much better it would be to get out and, and get to so many more people. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, just that's my opinion, and I'm not part of the committee, nor am I the chair. But I think that would be a good opportunity. So. And you all have the state. You all have the staff email addresses, right? So you know how to get a hold of the staff easy enough when you got your suggestions or your ideas after you're looking through the information. And if somebody dawns you, oh, that would be a pretty good presentation. Be interested to hear what's going on. It'd be something that uh, let them know, because uh, the staff's here to support you and what you're trying to do. And um, but you're the lead, so you know, let you us know. Call me too if that's easier. My number's at the bottom of. The email I send you every month, my contact information is right at the bottom, too. So, And because we have technology here, anything you throw out during this meeting will be recorded, and they can look at it afterwards and say, oh, yeah, Kathy Western said this and this, <laughs> you know, and Marcia said this and this, you know, so we could pull it out there. So any ideas now, let's hear it now, and we could, we'll note it. So, all right. It's very helpful to have the previous yeah. especially for you know someone that's new yeah right <clears throat> to see the kind of groups that you wanted to hear from so thank you for that we have good staff behind here and we're really lucky to have them any more discussion on topics or or locations okay i need the motion to receive and file that discussion i have a motion from someone not to receive and file someone. that report second kathy western Supported by Commissioner Rand or Mr. Randazzo. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Um, item nine is the correspondence. Uh, we have a volunteer recognition program information and form in your package. Um, our volunteer recognition comes up our annual recognition and given the active life you lead, you may know people that are active in other volunteer organizations. You might want to nominate them. People can self-nominate themselves. They don't have to be nominated by anybody. If you know someone, just say, you want to think you're doing some good work, ask them to fill out the form and submit it, and they'll be considered uh, with all the nominations we get across the county uh, for special recognition. This year, the Board of Commissioners is upgrading our volunteer recognition, going back to the old days when we used to have it at Freedom Hill, we actually have a dinner. So it'll be a nice dinner for them and their family, or, you know, their immediate family, their spouse, and right at Freedom Hill. And it'll be a nice recognition, and um, we used to do that all the time, but then, then came the recessions and so forth, and it, <laughs> we, we downsized it. They were still good, but it was just different. So we're going to... We're going to go back to an old school way and bring, take everyone down to Freedom Hill. So we're looking forward to doing that. But in every year, I've been on this board the longest of anybody around here. Every year, someone comes in with another group that I haven't heard of that's doing good things in the community. It's really refreshing. You've got a really helpful community looking after each other in this county. And it's, it's really refreshing to listen to all the types of charity organizations that are nominating volunteers and hear their little snippet about what they've done. It's really, it's really refreshing. And, and you know, there's so much negativity out there. Sometimes we get kind of dis dis distressed about it. But come to that, I mean, there's the negative is small compared to what the good is going on out there. So, and you probably know many of them. Of course, you're all volunteers yourselves. So, I mean, you all could probably be nominated yourselves if you wanted to. But submit an application, and uh, it's in the package. Take it back with you and share it with your centers and wherever else you associate with, and uh, spread the word. 
I need a motion to receive and file the correspondence. Did I get that already? Uh, I need a motion to receive and file. So moved. Second. Okay, moved and supported. All those in favor of receiving and filing those correspondence say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Moved. I also forgot to mention the Office of Senior Service has a newsletter in there as well that you want to take a look at. That's good information. Item 10 is public participation. Is there any from the public to wish to be heard on any subject item? Any item, item item at all? Seeing no one from the public, we close public participation. And item 11 is the comments from the members. And anybody who's got any comments before we depart? Yeah, I do. I have two comments. One, uh, you saw in front of you this flyer. Um, it's an organization that I that I go to their monthly meetings. It's called the Macomb Healthcare Providers Group. There's no dues. You don't have to sign up as a member, and anybody can show up. And this group meets in different locations every month. And I thought that everybody on this commission should know about this group because you'd be welcome to come anytime and you just get on their email list. But the, the meeting coming up next week is at the Parkdale, which is right here in Clinton Township on northbound Gratiot. Um, and uh, it gives you the date March 9th from 11.30 to 1. A light lunch is provided. And the topic of the speaker is coming from the Jewish Family Service, and her topic is a single soul suicide prevention. I, I'm not too sure what exactly that's going to be, but I thought the topic might be of interest to all of you. When we have this meeting, the speaker usually gets about a half hour, and then before the meeting uh, at 1130, there's a lot of networking, a lot of chit-chattering, and then the speaker speaks, and then everybody there goes gets to go around and say who you are and who you work for or are you retired or whatever. And then there's time afterwards to mix and mingle. So it's a great networking opportunity for everybody. Uh, this group meets monthly on the second Thursday of every month. And um, the, um, the person, uh, you have a, um, an email down at the bottom, Carolyn, uh, at Assisted Living Locators. And if you're any more interested in it, you could just uh, email her and tell her you're interested in this group. You can get on her email list also, and then you would get an email before every month. Uh, so this month we're at the Parkdale. We're, Carol, where were we last month? I'm trying to, Carol goes, I go, <laughs> month to month. We uh, it, it was a new facility in a bit, yeah. Yeah, it was up in northbound Gratiot, or was that SCAN? That was, <laughs> that, there are several senior focused yeah. networking groups. These are more for um, biz, like people in the industry and stuff like that, but they would be great for anybody to, jo to join just to see the people in the industry to get to know people who are serving as seniors in yeah. the community. And I think, by the way, because they move around also, whenever you go to a place, you get to see you get to tour the that facility. location, like the Parkdale. Yeah. <clears throat> and so we've been to a lot of assisted and independent living facilities. Of course, you can never see a memory unit because that's private and locked. Um, but it's it's very interesting to to walk into a place and get an idea where I want to live here, or what I re what I recommend this place. Very well also, you get you get you get price points too. Some places are start several thousand dollars less per month than another place. So, so just walking into a place, you get a sense what what I like to be here or not. Um, you get a sense of the staffing and and everything. So, <clears throat> I find it a very interesting group to to uh, go to their meetings. And um, so I thought this month the topic might be of interest. It's right near here. Um, feel free to, um, you could send me an email or use Carolyn's email. Or if you uh, are so inclined on Thursday of next week, if you wake up and say, hey, I want to go, just show up. Uh, I, I will be there at this one. So that's, that's one too. announcement. The other announcement is I put on everybody's pl place uh, this year's calendar, we didn't meet in January, so you're getting the calendar in February, but this is this is near and dear to my heart. CARE has put these out every year for at least 10 years, and the, the boxes are really small, so you're not going to use it for a lot of writing, but every month there is a, a, a calendar person who has at least five or 10 years of clean and sobriety time in, and they're working a recovery program from substance abuse, and, um, and so every month, there's a new person, a little bit of a quote from that person, and another quote uh, from somebody maybe more well-known. Uh, I just opened up to January, and under Andrew's name, there's a, an old Chinese proverb which says, 
The best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. The second best time is now, which metaphorically, I think we can all use that, right? We need to stop saying, if only I had 10 years ago or one year. So every, every month there's something that I think is very inspiring. So I brought a calendar for all of you to have. Um, one of the things that somebody that I gave it to, she says every, every night when she goes to bed, she writes down in a little box how many steps she took that day. So it gives her a place to keep it all organized. So that kind of a thing it's useful for. But I, I just wanted to make sure you, you knew a little bit about the calendar. And initially it was designed because, and there still is a lot of stigma around addiction and around substance use and mental health problems. And so it started out by people saying, hey, there is recovery. You don't, you know, and I'm willing to talk about my recovery uh, to break down the stigma, the negative stigma that occurs with it. So that's why it's called Faces of Recovery. So there's 12 different people in here you can get a little more acquainted with, but also be inspired by their message and also maybe a proverb or something that's in here. So thank you for listening to me on two different topics. I hope they're both helpful. <laughs> thank you. Would the Macomb Health Care Providers Group be someone that this committee would like to hear from? Would they be able to provide hmm. information? I mean, um, it's more of, of a networking event. It's it? not yeah. really an educational thing. They just bring speakers in that sometimes are of interest. But um, to promote the networking part of it, I don't see the. Well, I mean, is there is there a core function about ever helping? They're hosted at a. Hosted at senior right. living facilities, right? I mean, the core right? function is to bring so, all of us who are in the senior industry into somebody's building to see what it looks like because give them we're going to refer them out, and also to educate some of us who are in the senior industry to bring topics to us that would help out the people we're helping, right. and to get together with other um, referral partners. Sure. Has Karen been in here yet? Not that I know. No. <clears throat> Marcia does work for Scare. <laughs> yeah, I work for them, but um, but, but yeah, to have uh, Susan a come in. Presentation or an overview of what they do. I yeah, know yeah. Commissioner Coffs, Commissioner Hosser's on the. I'm sorry. Board. Commissioner Hosser's on the. Pardon me. Commissioner oh. Hosser's on a board. Mm. Care for Southeast Michigan, and they they're they're involved in a lot, and they do a lot. Yeah. And, uh, yes. Might be interesting. Yeah, Susan might be a good presenter to come in. Our CEO, she's. Um, really can talk very well about the different functions that CARE does. We'll add that to the list for consideration, maybe. Yeah. Okay. Anyone else have anything, any comments, any good news from the front? One more comment that I just thought of, too, is if, if you want to, whenever I get this email every month from the home health care providers, I could forward it to you, Adriana. Oh, that'd be great. You could then send it out. And so if in a couple of months you see, oh, the, I'm free this Thursday noon, and it's at a, a, a location I'd like to visit, you could uh, you can go so yeah that'd be great thanks very good anyone else okay well that brings us to a close uh, um, I need a motion to adjourn Court. all those in favor of adjourning say aye. Aye. aye aye opposed very good thank you very much nice to see you all and uh, we'll see you again thank, thank you, you.